Hi, I'm Gustavo Vinagri. I'm director of Trishis Trishis, or Three Tidy Tigers Tied at High Tider, which is showing at Berlinale Forum. Ai, gente, eu amo esse lugar. É ótimo pra pegar uma poluição assim. Falou a fumante de um maço por dia, né? Por isso mesmo, tem que saber administrar as coisas. Uma droguinha, uma fritinha. Ó, ah, eu trouxe esses pãezinhos japoneses que eu roubei do trabalho ontem. Que gostoso. Gente, que fofo! É de feijão. É salgado? Não, é doce. Que gracinha! Não tô nem acreditando que eu vou ficar sem trabalhar de novo. Ai, amiga, de novo com isso? Tem que entender que coisa é essa de fazer dourada. Ai, mas se fazer vermelha já não abre quase nada. Mas campeonato de futebol pode, né? Que ódio. Sabe o que você devia? Era fazer show. Não tem erro. Menina, então, dá mais dinheiro, sabia? Tem que ter talento pra essas coisas. Eu fico toda atrapalhada com gente me olhando. Queria mesmo era sair de São Paulo. Ir pra um lugar mais calmo. Como se você fosse esse tipo de gente, né? Ah, mas se é pra ficar aqui, pagando aluguel caro, sem trabalho, sem cursinho, sem pôr nenhuma, Caralho, eu prefiro ser abduzida. Você é da onde? Eu nasci em Fortaleza, depois eu fui pra Porto Alegre. Eu gosto de mudar. Mas agora, né? Ai, gente, é muito fofo. Não sei nem por onde começar. Eu sempre começo pelo cérebro. É que tu é insensível, né? Ai, que nada, viadinho. Se eu como o cérebro primeiro, ele morre de uma vez. Não fica sofrendo. Entendi. Bom, eu vou no nariz. Gente, e se o mundo acabasse? Ia ser bafo, né? Imagina presenciar isso. Ai, de jeito nenhum. Eu quero ficar velha, rica e poderosa. Só torrando na minha piscininha. <risos> Sabe aquelas velhas roucas de tanto fumar cigarro e a pele de galinha de tanto tomar sol? É. Vai ficar rico e poderoso da trabalho, né? Pra não fazer nada quando tiver velho, é melhor não fazer nada agora e pronto. Dá trabalho e ficar vivo, anyway. Hi, and welcome to the 36th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wurtig, and as you can see, I'm here in the Teddy Studio at the Myers Hotel. And today I'm here with director Gustavo Vinagri, actress. Isabella Pereira and Pedro Ribeiro, and also a uh, casting agent and acting coach Nash Laila to speak about their film Tres Tigres Tristes. Hey guys, glad to have you here. In mind. Thank you so much Hello. for being here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, it's a pleasure. Um, first of all, thank you so much for the film. I found it was a very beautiful and, and tender and rich film um, about so many things. Um, uh, on the surface, it's about uh, three people sort of drifting through Sao Paulo uh, during a pandemic that, that causes amnesia. Um, I guess my first question would be to you, Gustavo. Um, what was kind of your initial idea when you thought about the film? Uh, first, like the first idea came to me in 2016. Um, it was much about like the three characters and just drifting to Sao Paulo and there, there were no ex specific conflict. 
And throughout the years, the, the script changed a lot and because we subscribed it to a funding here in Brazil and then we needed like a number of pages. So I had to rewrite everything to make it fit. Yeah. And then we won the funding and then unfortunately came uh, the pandemic and we had to like our budget to reduce it because of uh, spending money with masks and all the COVID security. Mm -hmm. So I had to like rewrite again the film to make it smaller and safer. So I decided that that would be easier to make a film uh, inside a pandemic also. Mm -hmm. uh, that we would feel safer with the actors using masks almost yeah. all the time. And to me, it made no sense also shooting Sao Paulo, pretending there was not a pandemic going on, because then it would be like a peace, a peace picture. Yeah. And I just wanted to make a film about nowadays. Mm -hmm. And... And I think this lack of memory is something that is also kind of a joke here in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Every time there is elections, every time there is uh, like something that's really important, we say, oh, the Brazilians don't have a memory because they are always making the same mistakes and they don't remember like the politicians that stole from them like four years before. Yeah. And so it's kind of uh, something that everybody says, Brazilians have no memory. And, and I think that it, it is true in, in a way, like uh, even in Sao Paulo, how the, the city is built, uh, we don't know much about the geography of the city or, for example, um, there is the scene in the film with the Tietê River mm -hmm. and uh, some days ago, Nash was in my home and we were talking about that there is a river in my street and I, I, I just didn't know because all the rivers are under the ground in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo could be like a really beautiful city full yeah. of rivers and it's just concrete and the rivers are all uh, down the streets and we don't even know they exist. Yeah. So I think the city was built under uh lots of forgetting i think okay yeah that is also um a point in the film where you have where, where the characters go to visit the square and the and the cemetery so that's i guess is also a comment on that kind of idea of forgetting of, of something that is actually part of history but is sort of buried in the city yes so, yeah yes. yeah and um, with that, sorry, just saying to Nacho, from the cemetery da igreja também, como exemplos. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's it's no problem. Any time where you need time to translate, just uh, take your time. That's that's completely fine. Um, okay, just uh, Nash, when you need me to translate something that you are curious, just let me know, and I'll translate to you. That's I think the best way to do it. Um, and I think my, my next question would actually to the to the both of you, since there's so much of um, a focus point on these three characters, um, how did you go about the casting? Because um, you must have had a certain idea for, for a look or how, how, um, how people would have to be or what kind of set of characters you would want to bring together. So how did you go about that? I think um, I think I, I always like felt what I wanted, but I, I really couldn't put it into words. I think Pedro always uh, I felt he needed to have like some melancholic uh, look, but at the same time trying to be something else and me and Ash, we, we just like uh, uh, try to meet people on internet, people that at first I was interested on their looks, uh, 
uh, and what I felt through their Instagram pages. It was basically a research on the internet. And if I, if not only on their looks, but on what they posted, uh, what kind of pictures they posted, and how that translated to me something about them. And then I gathered like this, these Instagram profiles, and then me and Ash, and also Taina, who is the co-writer of the film, we just like started writing to the people. Pedro, for example, was uh, is an actor, and it, it, he acted before. Isabella didn't act still, and we just like wrote to, to people and try to make like a small interview with uh, people that wanted because uh, some of them were an actors and simply didn't want to be, mm-hmm. and and then we asked to all of them, like a small scene, if they could send us a uh, tape, a small scene. And Isabella, for example, was was sent us one and we just, me and Ash said, oh, it, it has to be her because <laughs> she was so natural and so spontaneous doing it. Um, do you have something to say, Nash? Ah, eu acho que talvez seja interessante colocar que a gente preferiu fazer esse processo através da internet e pelo Instagram, porque para a gente era importante quem essas pessoas são, assim, que, que artistas elas são, né? Uhum. Tipo, como que elas se colocam em cena, é, na vida, para a gente poder extrair um pouco também quem são essa, essas pessoas, esses pensadores, né? Para criar esse filme com a gente. Assim, a gente contava muito com esses artistas, então a gente fez um casting que não era fazer só um texto e falar uma coisa, foi importante essa conversa, essa troca de ideia, para a gente era importante esse processo. So she's saying that it was important for us to make like this first uh, this first selection on the internet because to us it was important to know who these people were and what we could build together with them. And so the audition w- wasn't just like uh, a scene, but it was also uh, to know what they thought about film, what they thought about life, and what kind of references did they have so we could like construct with them uh, the film, uh, because the film is so much based on these three characters and we really needed uh, people that were like uh, having like the same kind of uh, ideas mm-hmm. we have yeah and other ones to to build something different also yeah in that in that very sense actually my, my, my next question would be to um, you Isabella and Pedro um, how did you get get kind of hooked into your roles what was it that that interested you about them or what was it um, about the, the script that kind of got you into it and made you want to be a part of the film? Any, any of you can <laughs> start if you like. Um, I can say what well, was quite challenging to me because as a known actress, we were dealing with um, the characters that we were in the real life, kind of that, because I am Isabel in the movie, Pedro, it's also Pedro, yeah. Jonathan is also Jonathan, and, but also there is a, a lot of difference between us, but um, re-watching the movie was so, was so interesting because I still see myself a lot in that character, and, but also I can see the whole um, construction we did with Nash we was so important to have a, a, her with us and other as a, as a, as a size we did was quite um, important to make mm-hmm. a point to what we really wanted to show t- with the character and it was that um, it, it was really interesting to be to be to be in that and trying to rebuild a new person with my own characters. Yeah, definitely. 
I think that that very much shows. I mean, that's um, both of your roles actually have that kind of um, I don't know sophistication and and fun actually that I think comes from a lot of sort of exercises that, that bring out the characters. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, Pedro? Um, I think that there are. <clears throat> Eu acho que eu prefiro responder em português. Okay. É, que eu estava traduz. <laughs> eu acho que a primeira coisa que me pegou muito no roteiro foram as personagens, não só as três, Bela, Pedro e Jo, mas todas essas outras personagens que a gente vai encontrando pela cidade, assim. I think the first thing that called caught my attention in the script were the characters, but not only the three main characters, but all the other ones that we meet uh, in our way. Acho que eles têm características muito específicas e muito extravagantes, assim. They're really specific and like, uh, I don't know how to say extravagant, um, and really colorful uh, characteristics. Yeah. Um, e acho que junto disso tudo as situações e esses, esses dramas individuais desses três personagens um, me parecem muito importantes, assim, de serem debatidos e apresentados. É, enfim, so, assim. Uh, você pode repetir Pedro, as situações e os dramas pessoais? Eu acho que são dramas e questões muito importantes de serem okay. apresentados e debatidos. Assim. Ok, and he thinks like their personal uh, conflicts and dramas are are also interesting and they are really important to be debated. The the three main characters' uh, conflicts. Definitely, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. No, I think so too, and. Um, <clears throat> The way it, it kind of builds that complexity is um, along those kind of scenes. Um, and I found especially the scenes where you have a kind of intimacy or tenderness very, very uh, captivating. You know, they were extremely well played. Um, and you have, for example, a scene between uh, your character Pedro and, and, um, and Omar, I think is his name. Um, where you yes. have kind of a, a very tender scene that is both a sex scene and a, a scene of sort of um, elderly care, I guess you could call it. Um, yes. could, you, could you maybe explain to me what, what the significance of that scene was? Because I think it brings together a lot of aspects of the different characters. Me or Pedro? Um, actually, all, all four of you, but maybe you could start, Gustavo. Uh, então, ele perguntou da, da, enfim, da cena com o Omar, que ele acha que tem, é sexy, mas também tem uma coisa de um cuidado com, com um idoso, é, e o que significaria essa, essa relação deles, essa cena. Um, é, we, like, in, in the pandemics, we had to, like, we rehearsed everything through zoom through internet so uh we had like many uh encounters with all of us and everaldo pontes who plays uh omar and it was really uh strange but uh to do like these rehearsals on camera because it was all about uh, meeting another body and but anyway all all our preparation was done here and i was really worried how that would happen but it was better than not to have preparation at all so uh i'm just escaping your question and talking about <laughs> something else uh but I, I just want to end this thing about the preparation because i met i met all of them like uh one year before, I think, 2019, maybe, we met. 
And then mm -hmm. we like had one year of watching movies together and debating movies every week. Uh, and it was not about uh, directly about the film. We were just like talking about references and everything. And then when we decided to shoot the film, Nash came also to the meetings. And then we started like reading and rehearsing all through camera. And that was really weird. But also it had to do with, uh, I think the world that these characters are living in the pandemic also. and the character of Pedro, who is like selling his image through internet and it's kind of a, a hooker, but uh, a digital hooker, but also uh, meeting people. And I think uh, to me, the scene with Omar is very, very, very important and beautiful because it is about uh, being together uh, physically, and it's about like accepting uh, what the human body is uh, with all, I mean, Omar is dying of cancer in the film mm -hmm. and he has HIV and he's like in a bed needing Pedro's help to change his diaper. And I didn't want to portray that as uh, a pitiful uh, moment I wanted to be kind of sexy and that they could relate and that Pedro would act uh, really naturally uh, changing his diaper and that that would be also uh, sexy in a way. And, and to show that even though they have like this money relationship uh, mm -hmm. because Omar is paying, there is also a kind of respect and, and tenderness in that relationship but of course always like coming back to the money I think that the film has like this leitmotif of uh, the value of things and and money and mm -hmm. how money can can change relationships yeah it's really subtle it's not like oh it's a film about mm -hmm. uh money but i think it's there all the time the value of things when they go to see this uh to mirta's drift shop it's all about the value of uh the objects and and i think the film is really trying to talk about uh what is the value of the world nowadays you know mm. uh, uh, where are we heading to as a society and what are we gonna do with all the things we built? Um, so to me, Omar, coming back to Omar is just like a, a, a really uh, tender moment of the film. It's mm -hmm. really emotional to me. I yeah. talk about several things. <laughs> no, that's, that's that's fun. I went I can, everywhere. Yeah. Sorry. No, but I can understand because that there is this this theme of as the characters call it capitalism, <laughs> which uh -huh. yeah, where they where they kind of uh, discuss all that issue of of money, of earning money, of um, kind of being cheated out on certain things because of money, because people need to earn. And it also shows in that scene between Pedro and Omar, because um, while they both seem to be very close and tender with each other, um, there's still this kind of money interaction that, that doesn't seem to go Pedro's way, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe you could tell us, Pedro, what, what your experience with, with that scene was as well. Um, eu me lembro que eu acho que era uma das cenas que eu estava mais aflito, assim, de, de fazer, de gravar. Mas todo o processo para acontecer foi muito interessante, assim. A gente teve, eu e o Amar, a gente fez algumas sessões de camming, é, enquanto a gente estava nesse momento de preparação é, pré-gravações, assim. Então, com a... He's saying that he was the thing that he was most nervous to do, but uh, he said it was really nice to do also because they had a long preparation and he and Everaldo, who plays Omar, they had some sessions of camming uh, 
uh, as preparation. So they were like meeting on camera and doing like small uh, showing off gigs. É, então, eu acho que esse momento prévio ajudou muito a dissipar assim, esse medo e a ganhar uma intimidade com o Everaldo, assim, que também foi muito aberto para gravar essa cena. Eu, durante as gravações, eu lembro que a gente estava com muito frio, então, entre um take e outro, a gente estava se aquecendo e, e tentando manter essa ligação, assim, um com o outro. And this preparation also helped like to break this ice with Everaldo and make them more intimate. And he remembers that when they shot the scene, it was a really cold day here and they like kept like uh, uh, getting warm in, in, the, uh, in the breaks they had from shooting. They, they were still like making contact and getting themselves warm to get back to the scene. Um, enfim, eu acho que todo esse processo ajuda bastante a, a desenvolver essa relação que é de bastante carinho com o Omar, entre Pedro e Omar, mas que Pedro também tem, Pedro também sabe por que, que ele está ali, assim, ele também tem as necessidades dele e por mais que exista esse carinho, que eu acho um carinho muito genuíno entre os personagens, um, Pedro também tem uma verdade muito específica, assim. He's saying that um, he truly believes there is this like uh, tenderness between the characters, but he says that he know that Pedro knows why he is here, why he is there with Omar. Also, he's not like innocent. He knows what yeah. he needs to get from that. But he also believes that there is a true bounding between them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, maybe also a question for for Nash. Um, how did you kind of go about um, um, exercising with with uh, Pedro in that in that scene? Was there uh, a certain way that you that you went about that? Como vocês estão com o Pedro? É, a gente fez tudo por vídeo, né? A gente teve que usar, inclusive, a, a pandemia que a gente estava vivendo e a pandemia narrativa a nosso favor, assim. Então, uma, decis, uma, uma, uma decisão que a gente tomou é que a gente... O Omar também, o, o Everaldo não poderia vir a, no primeiro momento e a gente resolveu fazer esses processos de queime, assim, que era basicamente essa relação, como, que, como seria essa relação sexual virtual, né, através da tela. Você quer falar? She said uh, we had like to use the pandemic, the real pandemic and the pandemic in the film uh, in a way that would benefit us because we had to do all the rehearsals through camera. So she said she like wanted to imagine how it would be uh, this relationship between Pedro and Omar in in a pandemic through video, through uh, showing themselves, their bodies and having sex through video also. Uma coisa importante é que eu acho que a presença do Everaldo Pontes trazia para a gente uma tranquilidade nesse sentido. Ele é uma figura, um ator muito experiente que, que a gente sabia que ia trazer, né, que ia furar a, a, a barreira da, do vidro, né, da tela. Então foi muito simples para a gente a brincadeira também por um lado. She said that it was really important to have the presence of Everaldo Pontes uh, because he's a really experienced actor and she knew he would just give. Uh, as like uh, he would break the ice of the of the video thing that he would like have this power to 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 dialogue uh, uh, with no barriers. So mm -hmm. uh, and it, that happened because he's really like a charismatic uh, actor and person. Yeah. 
E, sobretudo, para criar essa relação deles dois, de intimidade, carinho e de troca real, assim. A gente não queria transformar o, o Omar num velhinho. É um velhinho sexy, é um velhinho que tem sexualidade. Então, a gente queria... A, a, os meninos trouxeram muito isso durante o processo, assim. A, a, o real tesão entre essas duas figuras, assim. A gente queria trabalhar bastante isso e a gente foi bem. He wanted to create this relationship between them, this intimacy, and it was really important for us not to make Omar look or sound like uh, a, an old man who's dying. We mm. just wanted him to be sexy, and she believes that like this rehearsing between them just made like this this come to realness because. Uh, That was like we were always researching for this mutual interest in, interest between them, mm -hmm. and and this attraction between them. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I mean, the the, the film has those different aspects in in the way that it shows this this realness, this closeness and tenderness, and and also those very heavy topics. You know, there's disease and 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 HIV as well. Um, and at the same time, it also has that those magical moments, you know, specifically in the in the sort of second half where you have this beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, sort of dream sequence or, or vision um, in the in the antique shop, um, mm -hmm. in which you, Isabella, have have this beautiful uh, uh, scene as as a jaguar. Um, could you um, maybe? Uh, Gustavo, you can start. Um, um, what give us an idea what um, that kind of um, magical moment meant, or that difference between kind of the stark reality and those magical visions? Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, when they enter like this antique shop, they are going to a world that they are gonna face, each one of them is gonna face their their conflicts, but in another way, in a, not that narrative classical way that they've been showing in the first half of the film. But I think they're gonna deal, like Isabella is gonna deal with uh, her will to be rich and to have a career, but she's gonna like see Uh, another side of what she desires and Pedro who is babyface uh, his, his nickname on internet is gonna like literate, literally become a baby and Jonathan also is gonna have like his wish uh, realized mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's it is much about like also about the disease, uh, about about this crazy moment that we are living. And, mm. and I think uh, it has to do with uh, just how crazy the world is also. And if you see the whole film, there are like really different moments where the characters are taking Uh, different drugs, like Pedro, mm. right in the first scene, he's taking his meds to mm. his depression or or his panic attacks, and then they are smoking marijuana, and in the other scene, uh, Mirta in the antique shop, she's like placing them this tea mm. uh, that we don't know what causes, so I think it has like uh, someone could read also as like this this uh that all the 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 adding of all these drugs maybe caused that moment yeah yeah but yeah like mixing everything and just i don't know maybe yeah no definitely they, they, else. yeah there could be different uh -huh. Uh, interpretations or way that could work yeah. as as a as as a potion as some sort of drug. 
or maybe just kind of as, as part of the imagination. Um, and I found that this scene in the antique shop and, and sort of the, this visionary scene was something that must have, um, that must have been, um, you know, especially you, Pedro and, and Isabella, you had um, those scenes where you had to kind of like go out of yourself a lot. At least that's, that's what it seemed like to me. Could you explain to me or, or tell me what your experience was with shooting those scenes? Mm. Whoever wants to start. <laughs> For me, it was, um, it was weird because um, I like when they say this part of the, the, the film is dreamy because it felt really the subconscious mm -hmm. of the whole process. We shoot uh, that the part of the film, uh, like in the end of the, the 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 shooting process, and it was so comfortable to be around all those amazing actors we were, and you know, felt their energy, and there was um, a lot of noises going around, and so much energy. We were in the fucking freezing days in Sao Paulo, which is not that so common, mm -hmm. but it was freezing and it was so intense for us to be around that scenario and the the process we were going on. We we had some rehearsal before we, before we start to shoot in the beginning of the process and that helped a lot too. And it was magical it was really like so um fun to be around and uh, and and i felt that it was it makes really sense to watch before all that because it was so natural and and i really didn't feel much of the pressure but in the end of the takes we were all always realizing everything you know we were like oh my god that's so crazy <laughs> what have done and it was it was awesome yeah yeah for you as well pedro or what was your yeah. experience and for me it was very good this aspect that bella colocou de a gente ter gravado essas cenas no final é, do processo porque daí a gente já tinha conhecido todos os atores todo mundo que participou do filme, assim, e, não sei, parecia um clima muito amigável, assim, é, parecia um grande, uma grande jam, um sarau, um, algo assim. You said you feel like a big jam or like a poem reading, it was like a party, uh, and that made everybody very comfortable. Sim. E, e antes das gravações a gente durante esse momento de preparação né a Nash ela propôs que eu Bela e Jo uh, realizássemos performances relacionadas né a ao que a gente se torna nessa cena assim a MB, a Bela administradora a Jonathan Drag e acho que isso também deu esse clima sarau jam, assim, porque a gente já tinha visto todo mundo se apresentando e, e realizando as suas ações e realizando uma grande orgia com todos os atores. Uh -huh. Isso aconteceu também. And he said before shooting, we had one day of rehearsing in, in that place that we shot, in that uh, antique shop. And Nash proposed to them that each one of them should like make a, a performance about uh, their conflict, like uh, like Isabella being like the uh, administrator of that place, or and Pedro being a baby and Jonathan being a drag, and the other actors were also there. And we also rehearsed like the orgy scene, the orgy mm -hmm. with the with the objects and Nashi also like uh, uh, told them like to each one of them to pick a, a piece of furniture or an object that they would identify with 
uh, and try to like become that object while interacting with that object. Mm. And that was really nice also for us like to, to understand how the RG scene would happen. Yeah. Sorry, I mix his question with Anna and saying other things. Mm. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> okay. And uh, I, think, I think that's a very beautiful kind of way of, of um, trying to get a certain performance as well. Um, so that, did it work out? I, I think it, it worked out really, really well. Um, what, what was your idea behind doing that sort of exercise, Nash? Você pode me traduzir, Gu? Que, é, qual era a sua ideia por trás de fazer esse tipo de exercício? Tá. É, eu acho que a cena do cabaré, ela traz pra gente um momento do filme, né? Ela, ela centraliza o surrealismo do filme, assim, no sentido mais... E, e, e os desejos, né? Como o Gustavo falou, assim. Então, para mim, essa cena, ela estava desde o início como a revelação de quem são essas figuras na, na sua subjetividade mais íntima, assim. She's saying that it seemed to her, the cabaret scene, uh, it, was, it had to do with showing uh, the characters in their, what they represented in their intimacy. Você pode repetir o que você falou, Nath? Antes? É que para mim era importante que, que, que essas personagens, enfim, que tenha o surrealismo da, da, do, do uh -huh. filme inteiro tá concentrado nele, nela. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. E é onde like... a gente revelava eles, né? Uh -huh. é. And that the scene concentrates all the surrealism of the film, uh -huh. and she wanted like the characters to connect with what they yeah. represented in their most intimacy, intimate. É, eu acho que, que esse surrealismo ele representa um desejo, assim, um desejo coletivo. É, a gente fala de, 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 uma, de uma doença que é a perda de memória, e essa perda de memória virtualiza também todas as coisas e, enfim, cria a incomunicabilidade né, entre as pessoas. Então, era uma cena onde a gente via todo mundo junto na liberdade, assim, tipo, né, de novo. A, a dia acho que se dá um pouco nesse sentido também. Meu Deus, como é difícil. It's hard to é difícil, né? <risos> que, que, você pode repetir? Pouco a pouco? Assim. Tá, vamos, vamos, vamos por partes, tá, então. Tá. É, eu acho que é uma cena... Ah, acho que, ai, é difícil também resumir, mas... O desejo, é, falando do desejo, de liberdade. De desejo de liberdade e que é, é um momento do filme, enfim, onde a gente... Descansa da doença, descansa da pandemia, né? Tipo. As it's a moment of the film that we have a rest from the pandemic of the illness, and it's like uh, a wish for freedom, and that it's a thing that we finally see everybody together, just like being together, all the characters that they met throughout this journey. Sim, é como uma projeção, assim, é como a gente atirar uma flecha para os desejos dos personagens que o tempo inteiro, durante o filme, a gente via eles falando sobre, mas a gente não via eles vivendo, então a gente começa a vê-los vivendo de alguma forma. É como like throwing a arrow to the characters' desires, everything they projected, like happens in this scene. Uhum. E em relação aos exercícios, eu acho que, enfim, tem, é uma parte do filme que propõe né, uma teatralidade e isso era uma coisa que a gente estava muito afim de fazer, né, desde a sua proposta de, de atuação, desde o início. Então, a gente aproveitou a, a sabedoria dos atores todos que têm experiência com teatro e a gente fez uma, um grande dia de teatro, assim, para montar essa cena, para aparecerem as coisas. She said that this scene could be really theatrical and it was something that we already wanted to do and then mm -hmm. this scene could allow uh, going all the way like theater and that she, we, uh, we got all this uh, bag, uh, all this, uh, how do I say, the I experience of, uh, the experience of these actors that are really trained in theater, all the, the other ones. Mm -hmm. And we just like uh, went theater all the way. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that translates really nicely. That uh, just kind of shows you what's within these these characters and shows you what the desires are. You know that Isabella is going going after her career and and just kind of going after the money, but. Pedro in a little bit as well, but there's also kind of this this um, you know that that baby face nature you could you could possibly say, and that just comes together really greatly at that at that point I think yeah. There, there was also this this idea this concept that we worked also in the costumes and uh, that that Isabella was like the future. Pedro was the past and Jonathan was the present. Oh, yeah. And so she's always like projecting what she wants for her life. And Pedro is like stuck in his memory of mm -hmm. his dead boyfriend and maybe his childhood. And, and Jonathan is just living the present he's just like getting to this new town and seeing things and mm -hmm. and then becoming <clears throat> inside the cabaret he becomes what he wants to be and we also explore that uh i think in the in the rehearsals to mm -hmm. create things yeah and in that, in that sense i found that uh, uh the film is incredibly complex you know you have these all these different layers. You have kind of the, the the moodiness going from very happy. You have this humorous kind of scenes, you know, with with uh, with the kid sort of puking, golden golden puke onto the sidewalk. You have very very tender scenes, very serious scenes, and you also have that kind of temporal idea, as you described it, of of um, past, present, and and future. And I think that mm -hmm. makes for a really, really great movie. And I think also that scene, the cabaret scene, works like an uh, ex -ma 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 How do I say that in English? Uh, ex machina. Ex -machina. Ex -machina. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because I think the film, the film puts all the conflicts and they talk about what they are feeling and like Isabella uh, cannot do her test to get where, where she wants. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan is like just waiting to have his HIV uh, treatment yeah. and whatever. But I think that scene comes and solves everything also in a way because uh, I think the, the 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 situation that the characters are in uh, it, it's not like uh, easy to solve those no. problems. Yeah. So they, they solve it like in a magical way. Yeah. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I also found that instead of kind of a solution, you have this reconfiguration um, in terms of desires that are being acting out as, as a baby or as, as a jaguar or, you know, as mm -hmm. that kind of symbol of what they want. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. I think that's it for me actually um i'd like to thank you guys so much for taking the time and and being here with me and talking to me and um i just have to wish you all the best for the berlinale and i think uh it's gonna be a great success i certainly feel that you deserve it because uh, uh it's it's a beautiful movie it's just a great and beautiful movie <laughs> thank you